Hey, what's up everybody? It's George here and we're back with another video. Now today's video is video number three in the Align T-Rex 500E electronics and setup series. In our last video we went through all the settings on the ESC, programmed the gyro, and now we're ready to start on the head. Let's go ahead and put the camera on the tripod and get this show on the road. Okay, we're all ready to get on with setting up the head. Typically when I set up a head, I start down at the servo and work my way up. Now when I installed these servos and I put the servo horns in, I tried to get them as centered as possible before I installed them. I know it may be off by one tooth of a spline, it depends on how the spline fits on the servo horn. It really gets it close, but I can always make some minor adjustments using sub trim. I'll be doing the three cyclic servos right now, I'll be doing the aileron, auxiliary one and elevator. Let's go ahead and move the camera so we can look at the aileron servo as I center it up. Okay, I have the helicopter plugged in, the radio is turned on, I'm already in the sub trim menu, and I have my throttle at mid stick and we're ready to start leveling out the servo arms. Before we do, there's a couple of quick points. Number one, I'm not concerned about direction at this point. We're gonna address that in the next step. Number two, I'm just leveling these out by eye, but you can get them pretty close by eye. So let's go ahead and start leveling out the servo arms and we're gonna begin with the aileron servo. I'm gonna select the aileron servo on my radio and I know that I wanna bring it down a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is watch that arm and try to get it as level as possible. And that to me, looks perfectly level right there. The next one, since I'm already on the starboard side of the helicopter, I'll look at is the rudder. We can see that the rudder is perfectly straight up and down. It doesn't need any sub trim at all and it's in the right position. Let's go ahead and spin the helicopter around and take a look at the auxiliary one and elevator servos. I've spun the helicopter around and now we're looking at the port side Let's take a look at the Auxiliary 1 servo first. By looking at it, I can tell it's tilting down a little bit. It may be hard to see on the camera, but in person it's definitely tilting down. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little sub trim to that. And that looks about perfect. The last servo is the elevator servo, and it's located in, inside the frames. You're not going to be able to see that on the camera, but I can see it through this hole, so I'm just going to go ahead and adjust that. By looking at it, I can see that it is also a little bit low, so I will select the elevator and give it just a little bit of sub trip. And that's just about perfect. Now that we have our servo arms level, the next thing that we can look at is the reversing. Let's go ahead and do that now. Now we're ready to check the servo reversing. I already have the helicopter plugged in, I have the radio turned on, I have the throttle stick in the low position, and I'm already at the reversing screen. Uh, we'll take a look at the cyclic servos first. What I want to see is when I raise the throttle stick, I want to see the servos go up and the swash plate go up evenly. Okay, doing that I can see that the only servo that's moving up is the aileron. That means I need to reverse both the elevator and the auxiliary one. Let's try that. Okay, I've reversed them. Now let's move the stick up. And we see that all three servos move in unison and the swash plate is staying level. So that tells me I have the reversing correct on the cyclic servos. Let's take a real quick look at the rudder servo. When I move the stick to the right, what we wanna see is the servo rotate clockwise or move to the front of the helicopter. And it does. When I move the stick to the left, we want to see the servo rotate counterclockwise or toward the aft of the helicopter. And it does. That tells me that we have all of our servo reversings correct and we can move on to the next step which is going to be leveling the swash. 
to level out this wash we're going to be using our swatch leveling tool and before we can use that tool I'll have to remove the head. That being said this is a good place to take a break. I'll go ahead and pull the Jesus bolt out, remove the four links from the top of the swash plate, get the head off and get it ready for the next video. Look for the next video soon where we continue with leveling the swash and working our way up through the head. Thanks for watching and as always, happy flying friends!